Hi, my name is Valentin Kuzup. I'm the creator of ICMizer. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the recent update to ICMizer 3, which brought support for bounty builder tournaments or progressive bounty tournaments before the final table. Now we can review situations from these complex and very popular tournaments when there are 500 or less players remaining. And for most tournaments, that means that you could review the entire tournament. So it could be the medium stage of a tournament or the beginning stage of progressive knockout tournament or the final table. So let's dig right into it. And to review them in empty mode, you need to turn on the empty mode, which is located here. So when you select the progressive bounty tournaments, which are marked by PKO icon in Isomizer, here I have selected a 90 man 9 max MTT SNG, which is a progressive knockout tournament. When I click the MTT mode, the MTT control shows up and it is similar to the MTT control, which you can use in situations without the progressive tournaments. But it also has a couple of additional fields and it has the bounty column next to each stack. So how to use this? Uh, I'll be assuming that you are pretty new, so I'll just explain everything here. The first field is the remaining players field, which explains how many players are remaining empty. So here we have a 19 men sit and go. And if we have 19 men, it means that we are reviewing somewhere between the first hand and maybe a few of the first hand when no one has busted yet. The average stack, of course, is calculated by dividing the total chips by number of remaining players. If you edit the average stack, the total chips will be adjusted. So the total chips will be equal to remaining players multiplied by the average stack. If you edit the total chips, of course, the average stack will be edited. So here we have the total chips equal to 135,000, which is how these 90 max are SNGs work. And next we go to the new fields, the bounty related fields. The first one is the average bounty and it works the same. Here you enter the average bounty and then it will multiply the average bounty by 90, the current remaining players, and you will see the total bounty. Or you could edit the total bounty and then the average bounty will be recalculated. So it works like this. If I plug uh, something here, we can see that the average has recalculated. But of course, in the first hand, it is equal to 207. So the average bounty is the same as our table bounty. Uh, and here we are using it in the generation mode auto. The auto mode generates all stacks for you automatically, and it also generates the bounties for you automatically. The other mode which you could use is the manual mode. In manual mode, you can choose each stack uh, and enter it manually, and you can also manually enter the bounty for each player. So I believe that this will be useful for pre-final table situations with maybe two tables remaining, where you have a very tricky situation, maybe on the bubble, and you want to review this precisely as it went, because you will need to know the bounties from that situation, from the other table. And if the tournament is over, it is unlikely that you could kind of know that. To do this, you would need to take a screenshot of the other table and to actually plug these numbers in ICMizer manually. So for the most part, you will be using the auto generation mode. And it is fine because our internal tests demonstrate that in most cases the auto mode is not too different from the manual mode unless something very tricky was happening, like someone had unusually large or small stack or bounty next to him. So if you are reviewing the MTT SNGs from Poker Stars, then we already have them in ICMizer. You can locate them under Poker Stars tournaments here in MTT SNG section. We can uh, select from $5 and $11, 90 man, 9 max turbo SNG MTT tournament. If, however, you are playing anything else than this, you will need to create a tournament before if you enhance from it. To do that, simply click this create new button. Here you can enter the name of a tournament 
and here you check this progressive tournament to indicate that it was a progressive knockout tournament so here you enter the number of players let's say it was a regular tournament with uh, some weird number of players and here you enter the knockout for the player And uh, so here we can see that the sum of payouts is equal to 310 and it is calculated by multiplying 135 by 2.3. So the sum of payouts should have been, the standard payouts should also sum up to something like this. So if we were to create it, it would look like this. Of course, in real world, you simply copy these numbers from your tournament and uh, enter them. Once you're done creating the tournament, you will need to click the create button and the tournament will be created. So this is the important first step to review the hands from progressive knockout tournaments if you weren't playing in one of these two tournaments which are available in ICMizer. And I strongly recommend to always create a progressive knockout tournament before reviewing hands from it because it will provide you with the best advice, the best strategy which will be applicable to this specific tournament. If you use a different tournament, it may or not may be close to the actual uh, tournament that you are playing. And if it is not close, then you may get the wrong results from ICMizer, which of course is not something which we want to get. So if you decrease the number of players, for example, let's say 45 are remaining, then the average stack of course goes up. And of course, we also need to adjust the remainder of the price pool, of the knockout price pool, because it will be smaller. So here you would enter something like this, or maybe even less, and it will look like this. And this way you could create situations from any stage of uh, knockout tournament. And let me show you how to actually run a calculation. To do this, we click the, let's say we are on a small blind and we click ICMize. And ICMize immediately demonstrates us the ideal push fold table for this situation when we are on the small blind. The blinds are 100 and we are looking at the, at the push on the big blind. And uh, for this uh, calculations, I strongly recommend to turn on the ICM dollar EV mode. So the results which you're seeing are in dollars. And let's choose some different blinds so they are more mm, close to the actual situation at the table because we usually have antis in these so here you can see that the push with dates is equal to making one dollar point twenty six cents which if we recalculated that in terms of roi from the tournament would be something like 30 percent roi in one hand so you don't want to miss that push so this is how you manually review hands with the MTT mode in progressive knockout tournaments. And for this video, I also have a special uh, demonstration of how to use the automatic hands analysis for progressive knockout tournaments in MTT mode. And for that, I have a very interesting hand history file, which contains a tournament of this type, like we are reviewing right now the 90 man 9 max tournament with $5 buy in, where the player who played it actually won the tournament and went from the beginning stage all the way to the final table to win it. So to do this we open the file and we turn on the entity mode and we enter the number of chips in the tournament. And you can know this always because you know the number of participants in the tournament and you know the starting stack in the tournament. So here we enter the 135,000 and we click click load them and ICMizer starts the automatic hands analysis for this tournament and automatic hands analysis is running here we can see that some hands which we have played are being analyzed and ICMizer is finding the mistakes which we made and it is sorting the hands according to the mistake level so the most interesting mistakes will end up at the top of the list and the obvious place will be at the bottom so when you are running automatic hands analysis in ICMizer you always start from the top and go slowly hand by hand to an area where you are seeing that the mistakes are not present anymore so we have loaded the tournament of course the tournament was longer than the actual number of hands which got analyzed because at the beginning of the tournament or in some other cases the hands are not really isomizable because they are not pre-flop hands they are post-flop hands when the blinds are small or certain actions happen which are not actually 
push forward actions and we are not in the late stage. So the number of analyzed hands is not equal to 145. We have 68 analyzed hands and let's go one by one from the mistakes. Let's look at this. Here we have 9-4 offsuit and uh, we have, uh, we can see that we are in the final table. There are five players remaining. We are already in the money. And the signs suggest that we have pushed and the value suggests that we made a mistake. And as we can see, the push was a little bit too wide. Even against 18% optimal calling range, the 9.4 was just way too wide. And we made a mistake by pushing it. Actually, sometimes you need to narrow your pushing range. Even while we cover the opponent, this is just too bad. So when we lose 0 0.7 in this tournament, you need to understand that it is a lot. For a $5 tournament, this indicates uh, significant part of ROI in just one hand and if we do the math it seems to be like uh, 3% ROI mistake in one hand. Let's look at the next hand. So this would, hand should have been folded unless of course opponent was calling tighter than this and I think at this stage it's not really too likely that he was. Uh, Let's look at this hand. Here, IC Miser saw the hand which you have played, which only had 69k chips, and it has generated the settings for the other table automatically. Here, it has inferred that the remaining number of players was probably 11. It guessed the average stack, it guessed the average bounty, it guessed the remaining bounty, and it has generated the stacks for other players. And if you don't like this, you can always edit it manually or use the automatic generation tool. So let's see what we actually did here. We have folded King-10 suited on the under the gun position six way. And apparently it was a push. And we were making 0 0.3 here, which is a lot. Let's move to the next hand. Here we have Ace-9 offsuit, which we have pushed. But IC Miser shows that this was a mistake which costed us almost half a dollar in this $5 tournament. So let's see what happened. The undergun player has pushed, and yes, he was probably wide. But for us to call from the pretty early position with such a weak hand like Ace-9 offsuit seems to be like a very wishful play. If we were on the big blind, of course Ace-9 would have been a call, right? But here, with so many players behind us, it was not uncommon for them to have some stronger hand here and overcall us and actually make it very unhappy scenario for us because if they call we are strongly dominated with ace nine it is not looking good so for later position this could have been much better as we can see as we move some positions are making this a call but not all because these bounties make everything pretty tricky so here we can see how Isomizer quickly demonstrated us a tricky mistake, which this player probably is making every day. And imagine that this is representing 8% um, ROI mistake in one hand. Move to the next hand. Here we are already heads up, and we can see that opponent has pushed, and we folded actually with queen 10 offsuit. So Isomizer suggests that the Nash is looking like the small blind is pushing 54% of their hands and we are only calling 34% of hands. So let's see if there is a, some kind of situation where actually the queen 10 was a fold. First of all, let's edit the push range. We right click on the range and we get in the edit mode. I believe that at this stage with uh, 13 blinds, it is unlikely that he is pushing strong nuts hands like this. So we remove them. Also, Let's see if we can kind of narrow his pushing range down by thinking that he was tight and we remove a lot of hands from his range and we can see if queen 10 is a push or not. I think it's safe to say that he's most likely pushing hands like this if he's any good, right? So he is rubber tight and let's calculate against this edited range. Does it make us a fold or it's still good? For that, I can left-click on this blue range, which is 
mean inverted is a temporary range which was not calculated. I'm clicking it and we can see that against this super tight range Queen 10 is slightly a fall. But let's see how realistic is that. Is he really folding these hands in this case? They are obvious pushes. So if we keep them and click the calculate we can see that Queen 10 becomes quickly positive. And we really don't know how good this guy is. Maybe he is very good and he is actually pushing according to Nash. In that case, this was a very costly mistake, which we made heads up. And IC Miser instantly found by review in the entire tournament. And let's look at this. Here, well, here we have also a big mistake. Ace 3, we fold and we lose immediately $1. So this is 20% ROI lost. And does it, does it seem to be likely that he is not pushing uh, enough for ace 3 to be a call. Let's say we narrow his range a little bit. Of course he's not pushing nuts as usual. I think it's safe to say. Uh, we remove some stronger hands and we calculate. And again it's still very positive. So if this player used Isomizer for this tournament he will have saved a lot of dollars and huge percent of ROI in just a few hands in one tournament. We move to the next hand. Here things get a little bit more tricky. Here we raise an opponent pushes versus our raise. Isomizer indicates that we make a huge mistake by folding king 10. But this is more difficult than the hands before. Here we really are not sure if our opponent is pushing as wide as he should be pushing according to Nash solution for situations where one player raises, the other only folds or pushes, which Isomizer presents to you here. Or if he is calling some hands and pushing some hands, which could actually make this king 10 offsuit negative. Because for example, if he calls with the, say, reasonable hands, but pushes with stronger hands than king, king uh, 10, of course, this would be a fault. If we narrow down his pushing range to something like this, and recalculate king 10, it quickly becomes negative. But is it likely that he's playing according to this strategy or not? It's hard to say. In this case, you need to open your stats or hands about this opponent, actually review them to get an idea how wide he is, how was he calling your raises, was he likely to push wide. But I think uh, if, it's, if he's reasonably aggressive, then King 10 usually is a very healthy call here. But it could depend. This one is actually not as obvious as some of the previous hands which we have reviewed. And let's look at the final hand. Again, here, interestingly, we have this King-10 offsuit. Again, we are heads up. Again, we raise, an opponent re-raise pushes at us. So he is clearly not doing this too rarely. And uh, according to Nash, we should call, and it is very positive. Let's see if it is likely that it could be negative. We make it 40%, it's still very positive. So unless opponent is very passive and he was mostly calling and you have some weird uh, structure of his pushes that you really think that he's strong here, like he's not doing with as a bluff and he's always like with a pair or an ace, it is not a fault. But if he's really tight, then this is a fault. So this is how Isomizer can help you to review these tricky tournaments. And I hope you can realize that if you are not reviewing them daily here, you're maybe making mistakes like this player did. Every day they add up. In one tournament you make several mistakes equal to several percentage of your ROI. You add that up and you may struggle to move up in stakes, even if you are very smart and you play a lot. And Isomizer automatic hands analysis can quickly demonstrate the mistakes which you are making and help you improve quickly in one month of playing with Isomizer, you will eliminate a lot of obvious mistakes like we saw here, and you will get your game to the next level. So I hope you are very happy with this update, and uh, note that Isomizer 3.2 update and uh, support for MTT tournaments in, MT, uh, in MTT mode for progressive knockout tournaments is available only for Isomizer 3 subscribers. So if you are still on Isomizer 2 and haven't upgraded yet, this is a big reason to upgrade. Because nowadays these tournaments are very attractive to fish players and they are very popular. So you should really spend some time working on your optimal strategy in them while you can in Isomizer 3. Valentin here, signing off, 
subscribe to our channel, like this video, ask your questions below, and I'd be glad to help you. Hope you liked it. Until next time.